what are your plans for Greens of Colour over next year? Yeah, good question. Um, I and mean, we've got loads of exciting plans and plans that we still have yet to yet to establish. You know, we've got a a really exciting uh, committee uh, that we've recently just filled out. Even more so, we were running sort of at half capacity for the first uh, couple of months of this year. And we've just, as of last week, really filled out a committee. Uh, we've got just over a dozen members now, which is really, really exciting. So so one of the first things we're doing is, is really coming together and think about our collective plans for the year ahead. But even looking at conference just gone last weekend, we made an effort to, to really try and have a a strong presence there um, and ensure that we had a you know good store there a clear presence a welcoming place for any members of colour to, to easily find us identify us and, and, and find out that, that place where they can you know um, feel, feel comfortable and um, feel, feel welcomed at, at conference and that was really important to us and really want to replicate that but increase those plans you know uh, for, for autumn conference is a big thing you know we want to make sure we've got a really big presence there not just our store have a big number of members uh, give big number of um, people of colour who are members of the Green Party there um, and, and also have a real impact on, on policy as well. You know, we've got a really, really talented and diverse um, sort of committee now, and never mind our membership, who also will, will contribute to, to sort of policy plans. And we really want to have a, a strong uh, impact there, both on um, the, the writing of, of policy, but fringe events to discuss policy matters that are both important to us um, as a committee, to the parties are wide and for, for wider society when it comes to, to inclusivity and, um, and, and representation. Presentation and, and amongst other things that affect people of colour and wider society. So really, really excited to, to have a really strong, strong presence, uh, even stronger at Autumn Conference this year. And just want to have more ways to engage with our membership. We had a, a meeting last week, a general meeting to sort of engage with the wider Greens of Colour membership. But we want to have sort of really exciting, sort of dynamic, different types of events over the year, you know, not just sort of online, in person, where we can really get together a, in sort of a, a large number of greens of colour within the, within the party and, and have an opportunity to, to interact with each other, to learn from each other, to, to grow to grow with each other and discuss you know, both, both successes we've had in the party collectively, but also the challenges that we face are unique to, to, to our demographic, um, both in society and, and the challenges we face within the party. So really making sure there are those clear opportunities for the members um, of, of the groups of colour to engage with each other and with us as a, as a committee and that extends to ensuring there's a place for support you know support for for, for members of colour who are looking to um, you know whether it's continue um, growing within the party run for election they are already elected and want support and how to continue um, and, and succeed and, and thrive in, in those roles um, and also you know, try and look for support for, for local parties and, and other parts of the parties how they can look to increase diversity and representation whilst at the same time acknowledging that that is not something that is uh, the responsibility um, on the shoulders of the Greens of Colour as a group or, or membership members of colour uh, which I'm sure I guess we'll touch on as well but still looking to ensure that we are you know moving forward that conversation as a committee at the same time because you know the same you know, as I would have spoken about many times in the conversations in my deputy leadership election you know I really have a you know a, a desire um in, in, a, in a well you know I think as, as a party does but a real personal desire to increase our representation within the party and ensure that it is a, is a home for, for everyone in society that we're looking to represent um, you know both from a personal pers perspective and my sort of eight nine years in the party now and, and still maybe not reflecting um you know society in the way that i'd like it to and um, but also acknowledging that as much as i would would want that as a thing it's not something that i'm going to solve individually and even as a group of color as a group it's something that comes from the party you know as a membership but also from the leadership and from the the, the party in itself uh, in initi in having initiatives and, and programs that really look to increase um, representation in, in our diversity but I'd like to be a part of driving the move towards that direction um, whilst acknowledging that that change is going to come from the party itself uh, rather than just just uh, you know the group or, or individual members but yeah I guess in a nutshell there's some of the plan but we've got we've got so many still to, to put together like I say our, our committee is new um you know our half of it is new really really exciting there's so many ideas already um just to know initial meeting that we've had this week so yeah basically just keep keep tuned really to see more of these plans develop over over the coming months but we're all really excited excited to have so many really engaged and excited members on the on the committee and the wider membership and um yeah I think it can be a good year for for, for our group over over the next sort of eight eight to twelve months so I'm going to pick up on some of those points you made around representation. But before I do that, um, one thing she mentioned early on was around policy. And I just wondered if there's any particular areas of policy that you think need to be looked at. Yeah, that's a really good question. I think that's part of our conversation we're going to have internally, you know, is it's degrees of colour, which, which bits of policy we can 
we can really influence that's not just internally facing it's externally facing too so you know, i think that's going to be better for for, for the white society and, and people of color within society but also our internal structures too and i think we've got some policies that look at that um so yeah this is it, to get yeah, top of the head maybe not some absolute clear direct ones right now but i think just collectively as a group things that really look to address our as a representation but in a, in a sort of really full and holistic way um so maybe there's a bit of diversion but sometimes we have really good policy uh, or well-intentioned policy but it's about the follow-through behind that as well so it's also looking at existing policy or policy that is being proposed um so this conference a motion that didn't get to be debated in the end and voted on which is a very good motion sort of on paper around um avoiding all male um and and all white panels and and um the people who put themselves forward for, for for election especially leadership positions which on paper is absolutely fantastic of course you know we want to ensure that we don't just have all male or white um candidates for, for for election but i think at the same time we can put that kind of policy on um in vote or through but we kind of think that's the job done you know we can't just have a policy that says okay now we need to have a person of color you know and and, and an on mail in every single leadership election i think well now we've got that written down on paper that's brilliant and now we've sort of solved the issue so i think even trying to really support these kind of policy proposals and the things that are there already and some of our existing initiatives that are good and are well-meaning on paper but don't necessarily go far enough and can sometimes in effect which is absolutely not the intention could almost appear tokenistic in a sense of well we've we've, we've, we've written this down now and therefore we've, we've found a solution to the problem so i think that's one of the key priorities as well is is yes we want to write new policy um but it's also about looking at the existing policy and see where um you know where it necessarily doesn't go far enough or where does that policy sit nice on its own but how do we actually put that into practice what does that actually mean and, and how we feel that you know again even just going back to that policy, we could have a policy that says there has to be a, a non-white person or who, who would put itself forward or we have to reopen them. But that in itself is not going to get a glut of candidates. The, the reason that we don't have, you know, okay, this last deputy election um, alone separate, we did have a couple of um, people of colour on there, which was, um, you know, again, uh, everyone was male and everyone was from London, so it had its own separate problems. Um, but, you know, there was there was that kind of representation. But again, the the reason why generally and predominantly that isn't the case isn't because there isn't a uh, you know policy that says there has to be it's because of wider issues around the representation within the party so you know that's something that we're going to look at a little bit deeper too is things, things around that that are very well meaning and well written but then actually what we're doing in the background to to really get to the root cause of the problem that leads me nicely on to what i want to ask you next which is there's i guess a a perception or reputation that the Green Party has of being a sort of predominantly white and middle class party. Um, to what extent do you think that reflects reality? Yeah, I mean, um, on the one hand, yeah, of course, you know, it's kind of not stating the obvious, but it's something that, you know, is, is commonly said about when in politics in general, about the Green Party, about the environmental movement, if you want to lump it within, in within the Green Party. So, on one hand, you could say there's not really there's not really too much more to add to that. You know, it, there's something that um, you know people do speak speak about. I think it's it's hard to deny to turn around and say that isn't necessarily what the view of the party is. Of course, being in the party for for such a long time, you know that's not necessarily the the, the full case. You know, there's many people within the party who don't come from from that that demographic. But at the same time, if generally most of our leadership or most prominent positions or you know, outwardly facing positions in which the general public see have been filled by people who do feel that demographic of being white white and middle class that is how the party is going to be viewed from the outside which which affects which affects us and harms us in many ways it firstly won't make those in the party who don't fit that demographic necessarily feel too welcome sometimes because they're not seeing themselves reflected within the leadership and within those in prominent positions and that has its own problems of course and for those who aren't our members it when they look in, they don't think, well, that's that's necessarily a party for me. I don't see myself in, in the leadership or in the wider membership if I know when I skim look over the membership. Now, of course, just to say that the Green Party is a white middle class party, you know, and I wouldn't necessarily just make that statement because it would do potentially discredit to the amazing work that's done by our activists, campaigners, and some of the elected people who are definitely not in that demographic. You know, we have great people of colour who are elected and doing brilliant things in their communities, um, great activists and campaigners who aren't elected doing excellent things both for a party and, you know, um, and, and outside of a party, you know. And so, yeah, it would be a discredit to say that and just to you know, disregard all the work that they're doing. Um, not everyone is necessarily middle class who's, who's, who I know and have worked with, but the general thing is, you know, on a on a general scale, in a general sense, that is how the party is viewed. I can understand why that's the party's viewed. That's the way I felt sometimes. And I think the party, similarly to 
you know, wider society, it's easier to do well if you come from that demographic and you're and you're a white and middle class. And you know, that is a reflection of wider society in general. You know, that's I'm not breaking new ground by saying that you, you generally have an easier time if if that's a demographic that you come from. So the party has to do work to ensure it doesn't just mirror those same structures that are outside of the party you know the institutional structures you know the institutional racism that isn't the obvious kind of you know racism and things are things that you know is people saying something to somebody that's like very clearly overtly racist but it's the more subtleties the institutional barriers that are there or the, the you know the, the similarities that are there from, the, from that are in society that we don't necessarily differ from sometimes you know not again in a very clear and obvious ways but just in the sense that we're just discussing this point here that it's not a, a secret that's how the, the party is viewed from the outside from a large number of people um so yeah you have to do a lot of work to combat that but that's not just about again like i said before maybe putting a quick line in policy every now and then or even sometimes having really well written policy we've got some policies that are absolutely fantastic and sometimes it's frustrating when you're in the party to hear all oh, the parties you know just for, for white middle class people when you know when you're inside it oh, we've got these absolutely brilliant policies that are that are really you know, for, for, for everyone, most marginalised communities, not just people of colour, that are really fantastic and inclusive and accessible policies. But at the same time, it's all good and well just having policies written down. You know, I've discussed this a little bit when I was running for deputy leader and the hustings and in the interviews that, that we'd had, that it's all good having things written down, but the actual action oriented things around them. Um, so, yeah, I think as a party, we need to make sure that we don't just have well-written policy. If we have well-written policy, then we go, we need to share that in communities. We need to connect with different communities, sometimes go outside of our comfort zones, you know, to go into communities that we're, we're not too used to going into. But, these, you know, we're never going to grow as a party and have representation of you know the, the white society and, and varying different communities if we don't we're not speaking to them and engaging with them or waiting for them to come to us you know that's just not going to not going to happen either and so you mentioned a few things there that i guess you know you talked about the green party being part of a kind of wider environment environmental movement which has its own um <clears throat> challenges when it comes to to race you've talked about it sitting within wider society which obviously is you know fundamentally built on racism and those, I guess, are, uh, you know, one of the many factors that's led to these issues of representation with the Green Party. But I wondered what your what your view is as to why the Green Party has struggled when it comes to representation of people of colour for, for such a long time beyond those kind of wider situational things that sits within. Is there something deeper going on within the party there? It's a good question. You know, it's difficult sometimes to get to the answer. I think sometimes, um, I'm not saying this is a reflection of what's happened now, but I think sometimes there's even a there's been a tendency in the past to, you know, if there was a member of colour or even the group, the group, the Greens of colour in general, a member of colour that that's where the solutions and answers will come from, you know, and there's ideas and you know, there's lived experience within those groups and with those individuals, but that's not where the, you know, firstly just capacity reasons, it's not where the solutions are going to come from. And I'm not sure maybe in the in the past has a party really really invested enough into trying to overcome this issue you know a, a beyond just words and conversations and, and you know writing things down and having having some policy positions but actually really generally invested and you know we've the, the diverse matters report um is obviously a key investment that's been done to start to look into these issues but and that's that's something that's really positive and hopefully that looks to continue but it's about that genuine investment into you know have they brought somebody into really really train people how to engage with different communities how to enter different communities you know have we really really worked with too many outside groups that are on, on policy and inclusive policy in a collaborative manner in a co-production manner that really brings in communities of color to work on these policies and then they become our green party policies that's been done in a collaborative manner with communities and we've done that you know by embedding this, ourselves within those communities and, and working collaboratively and and just things like that i don't think we've necessarily Put in that real genuine genuine investment you know that, that 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 it requires to increase representation beyond just the words and i think yeah like i said before putting and it is money you know money at the end of the day is money that needs to go into it you know money that needs to go into into a bit of re the research which we've seen but that continuing into training into support into things like mentoring programs but actual putting in these programs in place that are going to support representation that are going to support people who are trying to um, grow in the party and become more prominent in the party not just looking to put the burden of that onto you know the queens of color as a group or you know it's same with the representation of the liberation groups to solve that that misrepresentation or members of color to find those answers you know bring in 
outside consultants to find this out, you know, who are experts in this field, experts in increasing representation in diversity issues, in communicate, communicating with communities of colour um, in a genuine way, in a holistic way. That's not just lip service, you know, and I'm not saying the parties have necessarily done these things, especially not on purpose, you know, set out like we're going to just try and shortcut our way to, 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 to better representation at all. But I think the, the, the genuine the, the fact of the matter is it has to be a, a concerned effort that takes money, takes investment, takes time, takes a real program and a, a genuine desire to, to actually want to, to overcome these issues. And I think that is existing. I think it's becoming more clear, even the outcomes of Diverse Matters report, where it's repeatedly in there that every pretty much everyone that was spoken to the focus groups was like, yeah, you know, we've, we have this real issue with representation of non-white members, you know, and that's spoken about all the time. So I think it's now turning those words into sort of genuine, genuine action, um, you know, and beyond initiatives that that we could be able to do as Greens of Colour. I mean, one thing that we did at conference, which was which was really fantastic, and it was um, sort of Akira, our, our brilliant communications officer's idea, which was the local party challenge. Um, and that was, we had our Greens of Colour badges, uh, we were selling for 50 pence each, but we did sort of 12, 12 badges for, for five pounds. And with 10 of those badges, over the next year, look to recruit 10, uh, 10, 10 members of colour to your, to your local Green Party. And we got 20 different Green Party sign up to that challenge with the potential of 200 members if everyone is to, 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 to fill that out. We'd offer support for people and how to reach out to those communities and everything, which I think is a great initiative. And it's something we're never really proud of that we've been able to do as a group. But again, you know, that's brilliant that we'll do that. But there needs to be these the real sort of initiatives that go beyond that, that actually has the capacity you know that because we know we're doing this as everyone is sort of as volunteers and everything but you know, these initiatives are led by the party um you know didn't different kind of initiatives you know not things like that or anything that's off the top of my head right now but that's why you get people in to, to, to who are experts in this field you know and this is the kind of things that if, if it's being taken seriously that's what you do um you know and i think just to really look take it seriously um you know have proper initiatives in place um you know not just for local parties like that one there but real initiatives that are going to support uh, members of color people of color you know, access the party in the first place never mind then go through and look to become prominent um and get into leadership positions or elected uh, elected positions so before i ask you how people can support uh greens of color i just wanted to um ask you about one of the initiatives that the, the party has been doing for a while on this issue in particular, which is the DECA fund. Um, and this was something that I think Greens of Colour were promoting quite heavily at conference, um, which is essentially a fund that supports candidates of colour in local elections and other elections. Um, lots of people watching this won't be aware of this fund, so I just wanted to, to invite you if you wanted to talk about that fund and, and what it seeks to deliver. Yeah, thank you. Um, a really good opportunity to speak about this. So I appreciate that because I hadn't hadn't mentioned it. The DEG fund um, is yeah, it's, it's a great initiative and something that any sort of members of colour that are watching um, should get in touch with us about and and look to apply for. Um, you know, it's it's available there for our, our members of colour who are seeking to get elected within internal or external positions. Um, we can help with a, a whole number of things. Um, Decker um, or Decker um, Liriby was um, a member of the Manchester Green Party, former chair of the Manchester Green Party, and good friends with our community. Officer, officer cure um and the fund is, is, is helped and supported many people already and we encourage more applications all, all the time it's a brilliant fund um and yeah it's there to to really support our, our members of colors to to get elected you know both into internal positions or, or external facing positions as well so yeah really really uh keen to get more applications more inquiries about that as well and as you say that is a, a really um a brilliant initiative that has been has been set up and something that praise and encourage anyone to apply for all the time um at the same time you know this was um set up after you know the very sad passing of um of Dacre in in 2017 during the, during their campaign and um you know is a is a result of that um and it's, a, it's a fantastic legacy to to leave um but again it, that initiative um was that set up sort of after the initiative of the Green Party in themselves? Again, we need to set up a fund. You know, this um, you know was was set up in the in the memory fantastically of of Dacre. Um, but even then, I wouldn't necessarily say it was a just a Green Party initiative. You know, it's it's an initiative that's been led um, by the sad passing of a, of a member of colour. Um, so um, I still think that there's there are, there are many more um, sort of Green Party themselves led things uh, to be to be done. Uh, and yeah, we want to work with the party to to try and figure out what these could be. Finally, before I let you go, um, how can people support the work of Greens of Colour? No, thank you. Uh, always good to, to end on that. I mean, just speaking about a DACA fund then, um, you know, we always always encourage donations to, to this. You know, we get a lot of applications and hopefully 
um, you know, as, as um, you know, the party continues to, to grow with, with representation and, and have more members of colour, we're going to get more application to this as we'll encourage and we continue to encourage all our members to apply for this, um, apply for this very much needed support in, in a lot of cases. And, you know, so that would be a really big one. And, you know, ourselves as a group of colour, um, not to make it about finances, but we don't have, you know, uh, loads of money the bank has needed as a domain part, as I'm sure, but we don't have, uh, you know, uh, a massive amount of finances and we've got a lot of plans this year which includes uh, trying to get as many members of colour to conference you know an autumn conference which you know is going to be a big event this year in Brighton so we imagine it'll be an event sort of more well attended so we want to make sure there's enough members of colour who can get there and it is you know quite south you know if you're from outside of London you have to travel to London and travel down there as well so you know, we want to be making sure that members of colour can get there and we can support them to get there so that's going to initiate a fundraising drive that we'll be looking to looking to um sort of speak about more and more detail in the coming weeks but that's always going to be a very very useful support the local party challenge which i mentioned um you know you can get in touch with us on twitter get in touch with me on twitter get in touch with akua on twitter and if you've got any questions um, but please do sign up to that we'll be doing live updates on our newsletter and on twitter making it a bit of a challenge um but like i say we're 20 parties maybe a couple more now since that since we last checked um and if we can keep right raising that then it'll be brilliant you know we're doing it here in hackney because you know even in hackney uh, where i'm living now we're the same the same issues you know one of the most diverse boroughs um probably probably in the country um and yeah our, our party locally doesn't reflect that either so you know we've all got these uh, challenges to face and, and, and hopefully we could do that together and sign up to the local party challenge you know where we can all sort of feedback with each other on how it's going get tips and and, and uh, really look to make this a collective effort that's one of the biggest supports you can give um and then just keep an eye out on, our, on our, what we'll be doing over the year you know we'll be having events um to speak about you know varying bits of policy that we want to um get involved in and speaking around sort of ideas around um, increasing representation and and some of the challenges that we have and also some of the successes that our, our, our many councillors and, and other activists and campaigners um currently have too but yeah just keep keeping out for, for future events we're trying to engage with membership loads over the over the coming months